Hey guys, Paul McLean. Welcome to the Monday Morning Wake Up Podcast. Guys, I got a special treat for you. I say this every week and I mean it every week. My goal is to bring significant value to you. And I do that every week by bringing on an unbelievable guest. I can really show you the way forward today, guys. I got to say it's an integrity partner for one. That's absolutely, bl- I mean, they took their business from startup to just explosive heights, probably faster than most anybody else has, and it's continuously growing. It's one of those things where it's not, I don't know if there's been a year of stagnation. It's just like explosive year, explosive year, explosive year. And he's he's a leader of leaders. He's one of the best marketing minds that, I, that I've ever seen. He understands how to scale and build a business appropriately using systems and standards. And so today, guys, Buckle up, grab a pen and a piece of paper, iPad, lean in. And guys, I want you to welcome Grady Polson on. Good to have you on, big dog. Good to be on, brother. Good to see you and um, and uh, connect and, and everybody in FFL that's, you know, waking up early trying to get better. I mean, that's that's one of the pillars of life and one of the cornerstones of anybody who's trying to achieve is they understand the correlation that there is no step. There's no... There's no neutral line, right? You're either growing or dying, you're either learning or not doing anything. You're either failing or succeeding, and you learn more through failure than actual success. And so, um, but part of this, you know, these calls, and and I always love you hosting, Paul. I mean, I remember listening to you before I even got started in FFL. You do a Monday morning wake up calls for the entire company uh, back in 2017. Listening back in the day, the old uh, free conference call lines, and now we've got technology and all the beautiful ways to put uh, put video and audio to to different mediums. But you know that this for all of you guys. I mean, my hope in in, in these next uh, next you know little bit is to share anything that'll help you cross the chasm of of where you are to where you want to be and jumping over the alligators in the in the river so well i'll tell you um, what grady th- hey, this will be hope fulfilled because i guarantee you're going to say some stuff that's going to bring significant value and the one thing dude that i really do love about you man is like every time i speak to you um and have a conversation with you i just feel like i've grown because of it like i just feel like internally i just it gets me thinking i just feel like internally i'm growing and i'm leveling up And um, that's not the case for everybody. In fact, I believe as we step into this call, and we're going to talk about association, growth, development, but I do believe that there's probably somebody in your life right now that if you paused and took a second, and it's a good time to pause, it's still beginning of the year, and you said, is this relationship, does it it elevate my game? Is it a positive or is it a negative or is it neutral? And if you could do away with more of the negative just completely and then limit the time with the neutrals and spend more time with those that elevate you, like I, you know the relationship I got with Grady, guys, I promise you that'll take you so much further. And it, it doesn't take much more effort than just a simple choice and a placement of time. And so, man, you've always been that for me. But as we step into this, man, what I really want to do first is, is kind of ask you a question that I think really, I guess, um, validates a lot of what I'm saying, which is, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time in getting better working on yourself. Like you've spent, you've, you've invested a lot of time, energy, resources, income into yourself and it's, in it's seen, man. And I think that, like I said, you know, the, the, the out, the external, uh, results, it's always coming after the internal growth. And so what I want to ask you, man, is, and I think this would be great to have everybody listening to is what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received from somebody? Whether it's a podcast one on one, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received from somebody? Um, probably two versions of it. One, I I heard a Grant Cardone audio a long time ago, and I think other people have rephrased this similarly. But he said, "Whenever you think about something, do it." Meaning, like you want to call that person, you want to text that person, you want to send your mama. I should call my mom. I should send the text message. I should follow that prospect. I should, um, I should do that thing. Like, and I always, I for so long, I think even, I mean, it, maybe it derives early in life and high school and college of procrastination of tests and essays and things you've got to write. And you're like, no, I work better under stress. I'm going to wait till Sunday night and it's due Monday at eight 15 to turn it in. And I'll, I'll, I'll just cram it in. Cause I work better that, you know, I think that, that, um, that's a lie, right? It's a lie. We tell ourselves it's procrastination. And, and I, and Grant said it one time and I don't, he said it so eloquently, but he's like, as soon as you think about the thing, calling the prospect, following up with someone, reaching out to someone, doing an action, like, I need to take the recycling bins out, right? Instead of like making a note and just walk them out, like do the thing, the the second you think about doing it, because then a couple of things happen. One, you're not training yourself to create guilt or 
remorse or stressors or anxiety for not doing the thing by or, or forgetting to do it, or you just go do it and you're starting to create these habits and processes within yourself or someone to get stuff done. And like the way you can control and talk to yourself holds so much more value and weight than even the thing that you're doing. It's just, I trust myself to get things done. I will get this done. So one, it was just, it was, as soon as you think about doing something, do it. I need to buy leads. Go buy leads. Like it's, I need to make a note to buy. No, just go do it right now. Carve it out. That way you've done it. It's two o'clock on a Sunday and you're not going to dial till Monday morning, but you've done it, right? And you got the, you got the thing done. And that was one, one piece of advice that I took. And the other one was invest more in yourself than anything else because it's the only place you can guarantee a positive return, right? And I'll say it one more time. Invest more in yourself than anywhere else because it's the only place you can guarantee a positive return. And you think about the market, you think about Bitcoin, you think about you know, real estate, you think about you know, flipping watches or flipping houses, or you think about any sort of business that the cornerstone to any business you'd ever want to run or any empire you'd want to create starts with the person who's going to run it. And if that person isn't confident or sharp or educated or knows, knows where to get the answers or has personal belief in themselves to go do the thing or run the company to go figure it out, to solve the solution to network, to have the confidence to network. I don't know where the answers are to this problem right now. Who do I seek out? We'll find people that are successful. Most people who are really successful in life are nice and they'll share some advice with you. Um, is that like, you know, invest in books, invest in audible, invest in training courses, invest in conventions, because the thing that will like, it's a, it's you're like the human, the human body is like a, or the human mind or the hum, a, a human is like a 50,000 piece puzzle, right? And you lay the puzzle pieces out and it looks like confetti. But eventually you start to find some pieces that go together and find some pieces that go together. And then you got an eyeball and then you got an arm and then you got a castle and you're like, what is this whole thing? What is this puzzle? And you can see the box, but you can't really figure out what it is. And the reality though is, is the more you invest in yourself, the more books you read, personal experience you get, things you interact with, people you communicate with, um, experience you have to refine you to make you better to make better decisions the better you're going to be at putting those puzzle pieces together and the more you'll correlate colors and you'll find lines and you'll find the edges and you know all those little things and, and i say that but it's like most people on a fifty thousand piece puzzle only put together like 800 pieces and then you got elon musk who's got forty nine thousand pieces put together and then you got everybody else in between and i want to just get i want to put as many pieces of that puzzle together and i don't know which book or which audio or which course or which video or which thing is going to help me get better at it, which is why I constantly try to consume more knowledge. I want to be a good dad. I want to be a good leader. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a, I want to be good at the thing. I want to be a good soccer coach to my little seven-year-old dude and learn how to communicate with seven-year-olds who throw the ball at you and the pitch in the face. And you just want to throw them into the trees, but you're not supposed to touch other people's kids. And so you got to like figure out how to navigate, like go run, you know what I mean? So like, there's all the things that you're trying to figure out how to do. And if you're going to do something, why not just be the best at it? So I think those two pieces of advice, Paul, are things of just, when you think about something, go do it. And then to continually just keep on investing into your own mind, your own personal experience so that you can have more knowledge to when you do walk into new experiences, you've got something to pull from or someone to go ask on advice on where to pull from. And then, you know, that's it. The skill growth over everything else is a couple of corners. I love it, dude. I mean, that, that was so, so good. And I think the two, man, are kind of like, they kind of feed into each other. You know what I mean? Like I know for myself that, uh, it seems like the longer I wait to do the thing that's popped into my head that I know it's, it's precedence, like it's, it's urgent and important, the less likely I am to ever do it. Right. And, um, and I just, I remember hearing this quote a long time. I think it was Napoleon Hill. He said, he said, persistence is, is the insurance policy against, um, failure. And then, and I, I thought, well, you know, I think procrastination is the insurance policy against success when you're putting things off that need to be done today. And then, and then that's the breeding ground, like you said, with like doubt and, and, and shame and guilt and that's what really lowers your self-image your self-confidence your charisma all these things that are really essential to go out there and and have the fruit show up from the, the efforts you put in and i love the growth part too you know to that like you know just getting better every day and and i think that you have to have the first one grady before you can actually really see the benefits of the second one which is why i loved how you picked those two and you picked them in that order 
Because without the first one, if you're just always working yourself but not taking action on what you've heard, what yeah. you what you've uncovered, then you really don't know oneself. You don't really know what to refine, what to tweak, what to adjust. But if you're taking all that action, and then you get to hear, you know, these different, you know, nuggets of wisdom and and, and elevate your perspective and thought process, belief system. Well, now you can use all that experience, and because you become a little bit different through the experience. Now you're going to hear these things differently, and it's this evolution process that they both kind of feed off each other. And I absolutely love that, man. You know, I was listening to – in fact, you put me on him. Um, you said that uh, – well, back I think it was you, Grady. You said that Alex Hermosi was a guy that you, you like listening to, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and, and for me, every year I pick like three people that, that I, I just – I feel like they're going to help elevate me in whether it's, it's, it's faith, family – my roles and goals, just like you talked about, right? The things, soccer coach, you know, I got that in, 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 in you know, uh, common ground with you, bro. But, uh, you know, I, I think, like, who are the three? And, and Alex Ramosi, I was listening to him this morning, actually, at the gym. And he said that he spent, like, $130,000 to have six, like, 30-minute calls with Grant Cardone. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you hear that, and people are like, dude, that's just stupid. Like, why would you? But But he's like... The one of the calls that that I had with him, it helped me launch acquisition.com and know how to best launch that. He's like, dude, I made all my money back in the first seven seconds and some of the feedback he gave me. And that's how it works when somebody at a higher level thought process is able to work and speak into you. And I think people miss that, man. I think that they don't get that, like the importance of that, you know, and um, and it's such a big deal. It's like you look at coming into convention. Convention is free, Right. I've spent sixteen thousand dollars to go on a on a two day event with with Maxwell and then things like that, and I've seen how that's been a direct result of where I'm at financially, business, and everything else. Like it, it matters. What what do you say to somebody, Grady? That's like like how do you help them understand why it's so important for them to get to the convention? That's really like I mean, dude, it's right around the corner. With eight days, every eight days yeah. away, maybe eight days yeah. away. So, what does that look like? Because I guess I'll just say this and I, I want you to answer like for me, I think I became really good at selling when, when I was like in the client's house and I couldn't let them think about it. Like it would, it would, it would bother me to the core because I knew like, God, do they could die tomorrow? And if they die tomorrow and I didn't do everything in my power and I, I've been put in this position to, to, to tell them the truth, to stand up for them, to help them get a plan. Like that's my job. That's my role. And if I don't do everything that I can to make sure that I've executed that, I got to live with myself, dude. And I can, I could ruin this person's life, not, not executing my role correctly. And when I, and when I did that, it, it took all the focus off me and allowed me to put all my focus on them to best serve them. And in the end, that's what led to top producer status with building a business. I think that the person that has a person on their team, it's almost the same thing to me, like the importance of conference. If you've been in this position, like once you recruit somebody, you're no longer able to be average and ordinary. Now, now it's up to you to really champion that person towards their goals and where they want to go. And I think that conference and getting them to understand the importance of that is almost the same because I do believe it's either life or death in this business based off of them going or not going. But kind of talk about, you know, why, why is it so important for them to go? Um, I mean, all that, dude, I loved your perspective, especially with you in selling and how your passion is. I mean, I, li I still, I probably listen to you and more than anybody, you know, getting started in selling and your conviction for it. I mean, it parallels to how you built the business you built, but so I appreciate you digging into that. Um, but understanding though, like, so here's some, here's some realities, right? That Going to convention, we cannot guarantee that you'll be successful when you leave it, but we can guarantee that every successful person in FFL will be a convention. And there's some reasons for that, right? They're trying to get better. They're trying to associate with other top producers, other big, other businesses that are growing fast. What can they learn? What can they glean? What, what's, what's, what small tweaks can I make? But if two things are growing and it's almost like even going to a conference or a convention, if you're doing well, you're not looking for a complete total recreation. You're looking for tweaks you can make to improve. If you're brand new, you're looking for direction. You're looking for a complete correction. And, and a big advice, though, heading into convention these last, this last week here is can you, can you go on 50 or 100 appointments in the next seven days, eight days? Yeah. Can you get as much experience or as much failure as possible to then get refined 
at the event to then see people who are at the event that you know are top producers, that you know are great on the phone, that you know are great at one call closes, you know are great in the home and say, hey, I'm experiencing this. What would your advice be to help fix this thing? That's some, those are, these, you know, we can't get that anywhere else. You can't walk in mm-hmm. and see, not, there's, there's no other event of the year when there's 500 Hall of Fame producers and agency managers that have come together to to get better, but also that you can ask advice from, right? Shooting a Facebook message to someone then and hoping they respond isn't the same as seeing them in the hallway and going, hey, you got a few minutes. Of course I do. What can I help you with? All right. So those are some important things. But like the, you know, Andrew said this to me one time when we were first getting started and he goes, until I give you reason not to trust me, trust me. And I was like, sounds very kind of like, so just trust you, huh? Right. And like, you, so you come down the road and you're like, worked out pretty well, you know, it worked out pretty well. And so that's kind of some of the thing for anyone that's here, that's possibly still on the fence, like come to convention. If we're, if every single top person in every, every rising star in this company is going to get better, isn't that a group of people that you should be around? If your focus is to accomplish the same goals and to accomplish the same things that they are accomplishing, Right. It's like and that's a big thing, too, Paul, is like think about a new agent. Right. They have a a full time job. Maybe they went to college for their job. They're not making the money they want or they're not fulfilling the goals that they had for themselves or their household. And they're getting started with us. They're selling insurance. They're starting to sell insurance, dabbling in leads, working on their phone scripts, their in home. And then what happens? Who can they talk to other than maybe their upline? Their spouse doesn't know what they're going through. They might know because they can feel the stress, stress and tension in, in a partnership, right? When they're like, how's it going? It's harder than I thought it was going to be. But I, but I see people having a lot of success using these scripts and using these word checks. So I know I can get it. Okay, the spouse is believing in it. In, in, in John. John's work friends. John's parents. John's other friends. Like no one knows what John, new agent, you in this situation, if you're a new agent with us, is going through, but you and the people in our company. So to go to a place, to go to an event, to go to Lone Depot Park in Miami where you're on the field where the Major League Baseball teams play, which is pretty cool. It's a far cry from when I met you in Dallas at the basement of the Anatole Hotel with 700 people, <laughs> with 700 people and, you know, folding chairs. And we were getting this, you know, getting started six, uh, four or five years ago. Nope. Um, quite a different venue. So, but for you, new agent or John in this example to go from, there's no one who's feeling and going through what I'm going through to being around thousands of other people who are going through what he's going through is such a confidence builder, which is so important in this to go, there's others that are like me and you, and the connections you'll make and the uplines you'll talk to and the the other successful people you'll be able to communicate with to get questions answered and get resolutions for the problems you're facing. Um, there's, it, it, it does, there's no other place in the entire next 12 months where that will exist for you or will exist for John in this example, where he can connect with others that are going through what he's going through. And this isn't like, you know, crazy hard stuff, but it's a place where you can get clarity. And for anyone out there that's on the fence, on the bubble or, or on the struggle or succeeding, getting more clarity and getting more confidence at this point in your life, you can't get any more on, on your own unless it's through more experience. So whether it's more phone calls, presentations, or gaining knowledge from other people that have crossed the path that you're hoping to walk down. That's where I see so much value in convention is that connection and association. Yeah, I agree, man. And I think that, you know, I, I want to say, Grady, maybe maybe this is for you too, and I believe it is. It's definitely for me, and I feel like it's it's for most anybody that's that's seen success with Family First Life that they could say one of my breakthrough moments took place at a conference. Right. Where I made these these new levels of commitment that when I came out of the event, that commitment that I made, whether it was to invest more, work more, sacrifice more, do more, that led me to go out there and build these disciplines and habits that got me where I'm at today. I mean, I know that for a fact for me. Um, and I, I remember hearing these different things. And and the reality is, as I stepped into that event, Grady, I didn't know that that that's what I was needing. You know, like the breakthrough, I didn't I wasn't aware of that's what I was needing. It's almost like um like when I drive, I speed like a maniac. You know, what I mean? like it's definitely not not good. You know, um, 
but but before they, they you know back in the day they didn't have you know the, the you know the side mirror in your in your car how it kind of blinks when there's somebody in your blind spot right. yeah well before th- there wasn't that you know thank god that was that was 10 years ago that's before i was able to have some of these supercars i was driving like a ford escort with the stick shift but but when i had that I, I would just think you know i don't have to check my blind spot i'll just speed up real fast and get over well dude i almost died like numerous times because that's just i just wouldn't i didn't check my blind spot i didn't know that there was a car there right i I wasn't aware and i think a lot of people they're just trying to move real real fast in this business and they're not they're unaware and not clear on why am i not hitting these new levels why have i not seen it yet i've seen it for why have i not well maybe you're just not clear of what's in your blind spot that's keeping you from making that move that you need to make to see the progress you need to see but when you get to the convention and all of a sudden you hear all this for two and a half three days you're being submerged in an environment with information, these thought processes and these successful people, all of a sudden you become more aware of like, oh, God, this is what I need to let go of. I need to excavate this so I can elevate to where I want to go. And now you come out and you're able to make those changes. I think that's such a, a big, big part of it as well. You know, um, you know, for, for me, Grady, one thing I've, I've learned from you, I've learned a lot of things from you. I think something that I heard a long time ago, dude, I was probably 19 when I first heard this and, and I've watched it. I've watched it in your whole career. You you do this at such a great level. I had this this old coach. Um, he said, uh, the people that will grow the biggest businesses are not going to be necessarily the best salesperson. It won't necessarily be um, the best communicator. It doesn't have to necessarily be the best dress, the best whatever. But he said, it'll be the person that's the best promoter and edifier. Um, and really, you know, put a lot of emphasis on, on the, the, the power of promoting that that person that promotes the best will have the best business. And, and dude, you're, I've seen you do such a, a, ph- a phenomenal job at like always promoting man with passion, like no matter what we're talking to, you know, and I, we kind of both do it. Like we were just talking before this call and I was selling you on, you know, staying somewhere else. You're so like, we're just promoting, right? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. That. Now I say this out loud. I'm like, dude, all we were doing was promoting, you know, to each other, what we thought would be valuable for each other. So, but, but talk about like, you know, do you agree with that statement? You know, that the, the biggest businesses that are going to be coming out in 2023 will be led by the person that's really good at promoting and edifying, you know, and, uh, and if so, how's that, have you, how, how have you seen that be true for your business? I a hundred percent agree. And I think that from a, like there's two skill sets we're building at FFL constantly. And one is your, your ability to help clients make decisions to protect their family, to reduce stress and to put good life insurance in place. And the other is the skill of building a business, which involves having conversations with people, friends, family, work associates, strangers, you know, people you think that are ambitious and you meet it out there in society and educating them about the amazing perks of working at FFL or working in the insurance industry. And the reality though, is those two skill sets are both needed to be developed. They're both learned skills, right? The control we take as a doctor, you know, mentality of making the best decisions and helping clients make decisions in the home almost is counter is, a, is comparable to recruiting or to hiring recruiting um, as it is when we have conversations with potential agents to see if they'd be a good fit for our business or if they would be a good fit for or they you know would want to do what we do here and so from a promotion standpoint I mean it's you're talking about the benefits of a fail you're talking about attending an event you're talking about um, promoting your team right and I think we learned that early on especially from Sean is shining a light off yourself and putting it on to others And that's a part of promotion, too, is if, you know, I want to be positive and promote, promote the conventions, promoting lead sales, promoting new carrier options, promoting bonuses, promoting all the things. And I think that from a reality, though, is the skill set that can be the most financially impactful is the business building skill set of getting people up and running, introduced to the business, selling, getting, you know, moving along the business and then turning then doing the same thing. I'm now good at producing. Now, can I be good at recruiting and bringing people into this business? And that's a, a skill set that needs to be developed and, and curated. But it's having people understand that every single person who joins FFL is their own business owner. They are their own IMO. They are their own insurance marketing organization. John Smith Agency, who works under FFL, is can build as big a business as Grady Polson and Paul McLean if he chooses to do so. How many people? How much are you going to start producing? How many people are you going to talk to? How many people are you going to help get good at talking to other people? And how much, you know, are you going to continue to repeat that process or will you get tired along the way? And what are your goals? And all those things 
are a correlation of the realization that to promote and to edify and to build up and to talk about are just pillars of good businesses, right? Every decent business out there from Coca-Cola with polar bears and Budweiser to Clydesdales. I don't know why I went Budweiser. Tostitos chips with (laughs) cheese. I mean, it's advertising. You're advertising your business. You're advertising the industry. You're advertising what you've done, you've accomplished, and who could do it with you. I'd be a good – hey, Paul, I'd be a good – this is what I've accomplished from a production standpoint – that may or may not not be a lot of money to you, but this is I can I can help you get to this point. That's of interest to you. Let's you know the next step is let's get you in class, get your license knocked out. As soon as you get your license, you're in the club, and then from there we'll get you contracted and, and uh, get you access to our lead program. Right? If the, if that interests you, then let's move forward. But just positive promotion about the process. So I feel that you know seeing what like you know the biggest growing teams are doing, they just tell that story over and over and over and over again, and then teach others how to tell that story over and over and over again. It's not a glamorous story, right? We're not, I mean, meaning it's not elongated. It's not some, you know, you don't have to stand up on a stage every time you want to get people started. It's, you know, are you happy with what you're currently doing? Yes or no? No, perfect. This is what we do. If that interests you, let's get going. You're happy with what you're currently doing. Perfect. Do you want to add on some additional income? Perfect. This is what we do, right? How many times can people do that in the promotional act of our business our company and our agencies is just that conversation. It's just having those, those, those repetitive conversations over and over and over again. I love that dude. That's so good. Um, so, so in line with like promotion, what do you think are like the, the top couple things that, that somebody should be good and good at promoting? Like what, are, what would be, you know, what, what should be promoting? I promote first sales. I promote weekends, right? I promote, you know, people that hit a certain threshold, maybe 15 families protected or more in a month, right? Those would be simple things because there's power. I mean, if I only protected eight, but I'm seeing John getting getting shouted out in public amongst our peers for protecting 18, how do I get on that list? How do I get my name on that list, Paul? Well, you need to protect 15 to make it on the list. Okay, so from a promotion standpoint, it creates sort of, uh, I don't want to say an exclusivity, but it creates, there's a bar to hit, right? Why do we want you to get to 15 families protected? Because just, you know, if this is your full-time thing, the lead cost, chargebacks, advance, taxes, getting to 15 families protected puts you in a good position where you're, where you're going to be profitable enough continuously to be able to equate to a level where you can put yourself in a business that, you know, you can step away if you've got another full time job and do this thing full time. Right. That's so we kind of have these thresholds that we just see where people that want to hit this level to go from 15 to 25 is just more appointments. Right. To go from 25 to 40 is more leads and more appointments. Right. But if you're stuck at eight, there's there's either a there's a discipline issue. There's a consistency issue. There's just a, a lack of this isn't that important to you issue. So, you know, those would be things that I promote. But, you know, first sales, working on the weekends to try to encourage people to take advantage because weekends are best times to produce. Why? People are healthy. I mean, I'm sorry. People are healthy. <laughs> people are home. They're generally happy. They're not working. And it's a good time to go meet with clients. Um, and then from there, I promote, you know, sort of a threshold of an, a marker that maybe you've got a group of agents you're getting started with that you want them to try to hit but, but you're also on that list. You know, for me, I know for you also, I was a number one producer on my team till I stopped selling and I didn't want to stop selling. I just was so gosh darn busy managing stuff and things going on within the business and different marketing strategies. And, um, but I was a number one producer. So an advice for anyone out there, I mean, become a good, humble promoter of yourself, right? If you're the number one person on your team protecting 37 families a month and you got a leaderboard and you only got, and you've got people on there that are, you know, between 15 and you, there's the new agents are going to go, how do I get on that list? And there's my guy at the top. Yeah. This is cool. I want to be on this. I can trust him, right? Leaderboards create trust very easily too, when you're on the top of it. So those would be some things that I'd be promoting. Well, I'm actually, you know, typing some notes out from what you're saying to you, cause this is good. This is stuff that I want to take away and apply for one. What I'm hearing just to recap your example as a leader will be your promotion. You don't have to get on and promote yourself audible, but, but if you're out there on the leaderboard helping 30 families, and you're leading by example, like that example promotes your ability to be influential for that person. So they're like what Andrew said, like, Hey, just, just listen to me until I, t- I tell you something that's going to hurt you. Right. Yeah. And, and my example will show you that, Hey, I, I know how to get there. I've been there. So just, just trust me. It's going to be uncomfortable. It might not make sense. It shouldn't make sense because your thought process is here. Mine is here. So that's how it works. But just kind of trust me along the way to get to bridge that gap. And then the second thing, Grady, that you talked about with promotion Dude, it had everything to do with standards. 
like yeah. like your your promotion had to do with 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 really setting new standards for this producer and people rise and fall to standards right so so yeah. so now you're saying hey 15 families 15 families 15 families and then you're promoting that and talking about it you're creating this new standard where hey in our team we promote the standards that should be set and lived by by every individual on our organization that's a big deal man i never thought about it like that but that that's what everything you said was about weekends that's a standard our standard is we run weekends so and then the second part of it was was the conference calls the the, the convention that we spent a good amount of time talking about and promoting that because that's going to be you know evolutionary for their per, the person's business and this and on that's on this call and, and that's all about the system so if you're like what should i promote promote yourself through production promote the standards that you should have and promote the systems that are in place that will help you grow and scale your business that doesn't take your effort all the time it's simply you promoting some third party call podcast training conference that's going to help elevate your team and elevate your business they plug into it. i absolutely love that man i mean this is this has been so so good um all right somebody that's going to conference let, let, we'll wrap up here and then i got some rapid fire questions to get to know grady because i absolutely love you and I know everybody else loves you too man um all right, so so how does somebody get the most from convention? Let's just say the person that's on here, they're already going. They got the plane ticket. They got the hotel book, booked. Let's say that there's another person on here that was kind of on the fence, but now they've been on here, and they're like, I'm off the fence. They've realized that, dude, all I've gotten on the fence is just a bunch of splinters in my butt cheeks. I don't like those. So I'm going to get off the fence because this obviously makes sense. You know, I'm going to go to conference. In fact, I, I was talking to this guy, Grady, and, and I was doing a BOM in Costa Mesa last week. I said – uh I said, are you going to, he's like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I got a baby that's coming and the baby was being, being born this week. Right. Um, I said, well, what if the baby's already here? And he's like, yeah, you know, I said, are you pushing the baby out? Or is that like something your wife's going to do? He said, no, she's going to do the pushing. I was like, I just want to, just want to clarify. Um, but I said, you like, I, I went to, and my daughter, you know, Peyton, which, you know, she's 15 now, which is crazy, dude. Like I, I took her last night around town, you know, and she drove illegally just so that way she's prepared for her, her permit test. But, but if she, but she was two weeks old and I flew to conference yeah. not because I, I wanted to give a shot that I could actually provide for her. And I knew my best shot to provide for her was to be educated about the career that I'd chosen. Obviously yeah. like, hello. You know? So, so maybe that person that's on here, they're like, all right, I'm going, I'm going to go. Right. Um, what, well, how do they get the most from it? What, what would be a couple quick tips you would say you're going to convention. This isn't something that you check out the box. Like, okay, I went, they kept saying, going, how do they get the most from it? You get every bit of value that's there. How do you not, how do they not leave anything on the table, bro? Okay. So, um, a few different things, and this is important. So like one, I would get there early, get there up front, you know, try to get away from people that talk a lot. Like your job is to. When you're in the training to be sitting, learning from the people on stage, that's your number one goal. Take copious notes, go back after the event, read through your notes, highlight what was important, maybe even summarize it, and then pick three to six things that you want to apply and start to take action. That's a, that's initial point, right? What should you also go with, right? If you're actively producing or starting to actively produce or starting to start to actively produce, I'd go with a list of questions, not contracting, not, you know, that. I mean, products fine. The carriers will be there by all means. Go, they'll love to talk. They talk. They'll talk your ear off about their products. But go to the list of questions like, "I keep getting no shows. I keep um, getting hung up on the phone, or I'm not able to break through and get the appointment booked, or I, I, I'm not able to close the appointment." I'm saying this. Go with a list of five, ten, fifteen things that you want to get answered, and. Set, sit in the event and look to get them answered. And then on lunches and before the events and between the breaks, find people with red jackets, find people that you recognize from videos and go through and ask them your questions. And that's, I mean, that's all I did. I found Jack Yu. I, he's a Hall of Fame producer. And I'm like, I keep getting no shows. And he told me 615, say 615 or 645. Don't just say, what time can you meet tomorrow? Right? <laughs> what time can you meet? I don't want to meet you tomorrow, weird guy who just called me. I've been talking to you for 45 minutes. John, I got to drop this packet off to you. I got 615 or 645, which looks better for you. I'm not home till 7. Okay, John, I don't have a 7 o'clock, but I've got a 715 and, a, and an 815, which work better for you. Right? I give two ors. So that changed my business. I've got uh, Matt Smith taught me about, about age leads. Frank Euphemia went through in detail on mortgage protection. That's a goal for anybody that on here if your goal is to move into mortgage protection. It's more expensive lead type. 
significantly more expensive now. Um, but it's also a, a sales process that is highly um, enlightening and you can do very, very well with it. Those are some goals that you'd want to accomplish. But so when you've got this list of five, seven, 15 questions, challenges you're going through, go seek to get them answered. If you leave on Saturday, on Sunday morning without the answers, you did yourself a disservice, right? Yeah. So that's a big part of it. But then another thing, when you're, when you're meeting, this is, this is a secret. I learned this 15 years ago. This is a secret. And for anyone that's on here, Come up to me and ask me this question. I look forward to seeing who hears this and who asks me this question. But this is a question that I learned from a, I don't know, the guy had been worth a hundred million at the time. And he said, um, the thing that people always screw up whenever I'm meeting with them is they ask me a bunch of stuff that like they could figure out the answer. And what they should ask me is what's the question I should be asking you? And it's really like a deep question. Like if you think about it, like, like range it comes up to me like Grady, what's, what is the question I should be asking you? And then I'll probably ask you a question about where you are in your business. And then I'll be able to give you advice specific to you. And so the thought process is, is, is it's like a secret, like Jedi question, right? What is the question that I should be asking you? We well, should be asking me about how to build a business. You should be asking me about how to manage your money. You should be asking me about how to become more profitable. You should be asking me like, where are you at in your business? So like, this is a question where I can then like give you my best advice versus just a surface level answer to a question that you may be struggling with right now. That's like very juvenile versus I can give you and Paul can give you top tier advice if you allow us to know a little bit about your business. So it's kind of like that's, that, that right there is something that I would be going up to every person in a red jacket, try to get your questions answered. And what, what's a question I should be asking about how to sell more? What's a question I should be asking about how to build a business faster? What's a question I'd be asking you how to manage staff better, right? So figuring out that and then asking a bigger, deeper question, talk about checkmate, next level stuff. You'll walk away from this event. So I love that, man. So good. I think that, um, do you like even coming with the questions? The, the, the sessions that, that are going to be, you know, given at conference where everybody's on stage speaking, you're going to get more from the speaker because I just think that you've, you've, you've taught, you've shown yourself that I'm going in with this student mindset. I'm going in to learn. I'm, I've got questions, right? And even if you didn't get your questions answered, which you should, I think just the preparation of the questions for me, I got so much from every speaker because I was just more engaged. It's almost like I told my subconscious mind, like, I'm going to learn. This isn't something like check off the box. You know, I'm going there to get as much as I can to change my life. And, and I was more, I was, I was, I was taking notes better. I was more engaged. I was more involved because I had the, the questions there. And, um, and I love that, that, that question, man, what question should I be asking you? Because dude, we don't know, like, like, dude, you might have a, uh, you know, you might have a broken leg, but, but you come up and, and I, th I, I answer, I answer, give you an answer that's going to fix your sprained, you know, your sprained knee. Well, what's worse? Well, your broken leg. Let's fix that. Did, did my, did my sprained knee, you know, answer, give you some help? Yeah. Cause your, your knee sprained, man, that'll help you a little bit, but dude, you really needed to get that ankle, you know, cast it up because that's going to keep you from walking a lot further than just fixing a sprain. You still have the broken ankle. And so I think that's a great way to unpack that and go through that, man. So Dude, I love you, bro. This has been really, really yeah. good. I just love hanging out with you. Um, I love talking to you. I'm going to go through rapid fire real quick for you. So uh, favorite band and music artist. Let's let's get to know Grady. Uh, currently? Uh, let's do all time. Uh, we'll do both. I want to know currently and all time. All time. And this yep. would be, might be a shock. All time favorite music artist would be a, a rock band named Tool. Really? Okay. Yeah, I remember big, them. Cool fan. I don't know if Casey is a fan of them. Is Casey a fan of them? He knows them. He will not yeah. state if he's hey. a fan or not, but he does know them. Okay. Yeah. So it's a it's a rock and roll band. But it's something that my dad and I, for many years, uh, it's kind of you know I got a cool dad um, who likes to go to concerts, and so he started taking me to concerts when I was like in high school, and then you know that is cool. Something fun to talk to your pops about. So a rock band named Tool. There. So there you go. I love it. Um, all right. What about, uh, what, what's your favorite artist now? Favorite band, band artist? Um, I've been getting into country, man. I've been getting into a lot of country. So it, more or less all country. Why? And that's because I can play it louder on my house because my wife doesn't like hard rock. She will like, she likes country. So. Okay. Well, what, 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 more country. Well, you've, you've adapted to just bring more 
you know, I guess tranquility to your home. I like it. Right. Well, wait, let me ask you this then. This is another, you know, uh, get to know gritty question. And this might be in line with this. So what, what's the one thing that you do that gets on your spouse's nerves? What, what, what just drives Chantel nuts? I, I play music too loud. That would be the thing as I just got a little stereo in the backyard and I'll have the kids swimming and playing, playing in the pool and I will have the music too loud. And she's like, you can't hear them if they're drowning. And I'm like, I could see them. I'm in the pool. And she's like, she's just very concerned with the volume of music and kids, great. kids safety. So that is the thing. Playing music too loud would be the number one I love it. ripe of hers. Well, I'll tell you my wife, same thing. She said that she's, she's scheduling me a, a, a appointment to get my hearing checked because she swears at the volume level that I listen to everything at, that I've got some kind of hearing issue at an early age. So... All right, what's um, what's the most essential characteristic you look for when hiring an agent? Ambition, ambition, just desire, desire to do better, right? Almost an insatiable desire, big goals, um, and then the sub, uh, you know, if that's A, then A one would be discipline, right? So discipline, people that exercise, people ex military, people that are in, um that have done successful things before, right? Because success is hard. Success is very hard to achieve any level of success. But if you've done it somewhere else, you can definitely repeat it. So ambition would be the primary thing. Just something they want, I want to do something big, right? And then the discipline to accomplish. It. Those would be the two main things. I love it. Um, what about favorite book you've read? Most impactful book you've ever read? Uh, I mean, Think and Grow Rich is way up there. How to Win Friends and Influence People would be number two. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I mean, I'm hitting the top hits. But um, I'm reading one called Atomic Habits right now that's just amazing. Money, dude. James oh Clear God. kills it. Such a good book yeah. about just the different thought processes on who you are and um, – why we do things and why we think the way we do and just so good. And that's, I mean, this is just like, I never would have thought of that, of the way, I mean, what were the three things he talks about, Paul? It was like, I, even, I think I even wrote it down. He wrote, well, dude, I love the fact when he talks about like how every choice you make is casting a vote for yourself. So it's even the person that says, man, I know in order to be a successful person this year, I have to be more committed, more ambitious, more hungry, more, more disciplined. And then it's like, well, what do you, now you ask yourself, you know, now I know who I am. It's easier to choose what to do. What you do, does it cast a vote for the person you want to become? Or is it cast a vote for the failure, the version that's not who you want to be? And that's why convention, I think, is so important. The person that's saying, man, I'm going to be successful. Well, does going to conference cast a vote for you being the person that's going to be successful? Or does it cast a vote for a person that says, I'm not going to be successful. The person that's not going to be successful is circumstantial. It's conditional. It's, it's excuses. I can't go because of this. So, so every choice you make casts that vote. And ultimately, the more votes you've got is going to dictate who you are. And I, dude, when he said that, I was like, dude, that's so good. So that, that's something I took from what he said, man. It was yeah. a, a great book, though. Yeah. Um, do you find what you found or what you were looking for? Yeah. yeah. He, he, when he talked about outcome change, process change, and identity change, and like it's, a, it's talking about people that are just focused on an outcome, right? I want to lose weight. People who are focused on a process. I'm going to start eating better so I can lose weight. Versus identity change is like mm -hmm. I identify myself. I am someone who eats well and exercises, right? Are you changing whom you are? Like I'm going to just sell some insurance, make extra money. I'm going to learn how to dial the phone so I can sell some insurance and make some extra money. I'm an insurance broker who protects families and I make money and provide for my own as an insurance broker. That's who I identify with. And it's like changing your, the thought sure. of, who, of your identity. Like, is this just something you want to kind of do and dabble in? Or is this someone you're going to completely identify, I identify as a good father, sure. right? I identify as a loving and patient spouse. I identify as someone who people can ask for advice and I can hopefully find a solution for the things you're going through because I've been through a lot. Right. And I just thought that was so impactful because he talks yeah. about like the, being focused at surface level is outcome. Mid level is process, but I you change your identity. I ident this is who I identify as. And I thought that that's, that's just true. for me was like, holy, like that's really how you evoke change. You would yeah. change your entire identity. So I love that, man. Yeah, that, yeah. If you know who you are, it's, it's easy to know what to do. I love that. Um, all right. I got one for you. Last one. Something that no one watching this podcast right now would know about Grady Polson. No one watching. I, 
I host an annual golf cart parade in my neighborhood. <laughs> there you go. The way you set that up, dude, I was expecting some, you know, I, was, I didn't know what to expect, actually. Yeah, I, I an annual it. golf cart parade in my neighborhood. I, I think the one thing people might know you about. You host but, that. I saw the picture, but you actually host that. Yeah, I'll send you a picture this year. It's 20 plus carts, bro. Well, I, saw, I saw you. I didn't know that you were the host yeah. of it. Okay, because yeah. we have one in our I, neighborhood too, but I don't host it. I think like, this this maybe this will get it even deeper. As we, I will end with this. So when I was a kid, I didn't know how to talk, and I was chubby. So like I got picked on easily, and I was chubby, and I didn't know how to talk, so I didn't know how to defend myself or be or be you know communicate well, right? So I just kind of like ate lunches by myself. A lot. I mean, not to, we're not going to get all sad, you know, sad, poor right. Grady. But I'm trying to say like, as it, so these are kind of like interesting as you identify, like as I reflect on like what shaped me. So when I was a kid, I was like alone a lot. Like I had amazing parents. I had a wonderful sister. And, and then it's, it took a few years and I evolved. Right. And then you learn how to talk and, you know, you thin out because you start playing sports, et cetera. But when I was a kid, I was alone a lot. So like for myself, I kind of have this like, like addiction to wanting to create community for my own kids, if you will, to try to like selfishly hack their childhood, like by coaching, by being the soccer coach, so I can make sure that like that can run the practices the way I want. You know, I'm not I'm not easy on my kid, but I'm but I'm also, you know, it's nice to be the coach and you can kind of sure. create favor. Same thing, like when I, I moved in this neighborhood a couple of years ago and I created like a, a monthly movie night and we rented a big balloon thing blow up and, and had a monthly movie night in the neighborhood. So my kids could like have their little friends. And then now like trying to create community, even now, like why would I, who, who needs to host a golf cart parade for the neighbors? Well, all the, all the other families come and they bring their kids and my kids have their little friends. And like, so I think like as a kid, cool. like I was alone. So I'm like, as I'm an adult, I try to like, and I'm, gregarious and outgoing and but it's like this like little things that shaped me as a kid that i didn't want to feel anymore now now as an adult i try to create the opposite of that by creating events and doing things and from being like maybe that's where like the dude we're digging in here this is where like my passion for promotion comes from to bring people together yeah because I would sat in at, at my grade school in fourth grade and ate my sack lunch by myself for so many months in a row so you know it's interesting the way the way we can all be shaped. So what, I mean, the teaching moment for any of one on here is that you can evolve, like you can become whatever you want. You can, but you have to want it, right? That's a part of it. I think maybe that's my, my obsession with personal development was, is I, I, I was fortunate in my other businesses when I was an MLM to be around a lot of very, very successful people, very successful people, like multiple six figure monthly incomes. And they would always talk about the cornerstone towards their success was their own personal growth. And you're like, okay, who am I to challenge this guy who's doing, who's making more money in a month than most people I know make in a year. And he's saying, read more, listen more, focus on your personal development. I heard that for so long that now I just obsess about it. And then I try to take that and pass it back out. And I mean, here's a line from Hermosi. He talks about the way we gain status in society is by giving, right? Giving to the group like this. You're gaining status in FFL by helping train other people get better, right? Versus the way people think you gain status is by taking from the group, by saying, I've done this or give me this, or I'm going to pull this, right? Where the reality is you gain status by serving the team, by serving the business, by serving the group. And so I think that's, um, you know, a cornerstone of I think a lot of what you've done with all the trainings you've given out. I try to do the same thing and people go, thanks for your trainings. And I'm like, I'm doing it because I want to help people get better. Like, yeah. I don't want the status, but it comes like by part of what, but just being a good giver to helping other people break through stuff. So there's a lot there. There's a lot, long, lo long last question. So well, I think it was a good one, man. Cause that definitely helped us get, get inside, uh, you know, Grady and dude, I'll, I'll tell you what, man, I love you, bro. I mean, this, this has been so, so good. Um, and I think for everybody that's on here that maybe you're going through that moment where you're like, you know, you're the kid, you know, by yourself, so to speak. I mean, cause that's, you know, um, that's an analogy that you can apply to any, it could just be a valley moment in your life, you know? And, and sometimes it's like, we go through those, not just, you know, it's not for, for us as much as it is for what we're able to, to do to serve somebody else further down the road, you know? And I just wonder if there's, you know, maybe kids that go to that, 
that um you know whether it's a golf cart parade if it's if it's a soccer if it's a movie night that that do like maybe that that brings their family together maybe they don't have the same disciplines and habits that that maybe your family does that you know they just kind of they don't have the connection but that's that one night where they get to connect and you just never know man i mean i think that's how god will use all things to work together for good even in the moment where we don't know like why am i having to go through this why can't i talk right what can i do this but down the road it's like man that wasn't you know happening to you is happening so you could bless somebody else and in doing so you be blessed and so i love it bro guys make sure to like i don't even have to tell you to share it because i know that you know you've probably already done it because this has been so so good uh make sure to comment we have a uh, a drawing that we do each week that we give out lead money. So you want to make sure that you put yourself in a position to have more clients to call this week. And also we're going to do a little spin. This is something that I just thought about because this has been so good. And um, what we're going to do is this any for the comments. Also, we're going to put them in the drawing and we're going to draw a winner. And the winner is going to get a, a room paid for at the annual convention. So uh, oh. you have got to have, you got to show us that you're registered, right? And um, you got to have a plane ticket. Or, you know, or, or let's just show us your registration. If you got your registration, we'll get you the hotel. You get the plane ticket letter. So, so we'll also have that. So in this drawing, you get to win four different winners for lead money and also a room for annual convention because I know for a fact that this is going to be a massive year for you. Grady, I know you can look back and say there was that one year that everything changed. I know for myself, I can remember it was just that one year. And guys, there's somebody on here where this is Great. year one year. You year know? one, dude. It was year one. That's it. Year one saw it never looked back and that for many of you guys who who need that like this could be and then i also i learned a ton every single year subsequently but without year one i never would have made it to year two and some of you guys are on the fence about making this your first year we just if i could beg and plead borrow and beg plead borrow and steal get yourself there to get better absolutely man well hey dude appreciate your brother guys let's make it a massive week be strong stay steadfast we'll talk to you soon take care (music) bye-bye What's going on guys? You know what time it is. We are giving away $250 worth of free leads to four lucky people. So if you commented on last week's video, which is playing right over here, you're automatically going to win $250 worth of free leads. So comment on this video right now down below so you're entered to win next week. Leads are huge. Leads are everything. And everyone loves having more of them because they're literally life in this business. So comment right down below. Without further ado, let's see who our first winner is. Dorothy, Dorothy Two Blue, great content. Our second winner is Veronica Muhammad. Love this. Our third winner is Frank Collins. This is great content. And our fourth and final winner is Heather Holcomb. Yeah, I'm down with that. Guys, see, it's that simple. All you gotta do is just leave a comment. Telling you, telling us that you liked the content, that you liked the podcast. It's that easy. So leave a comment right down below. Winners, get into contact with Victoria. Her email is going to be right over here. And guys, we'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good one.